it's far surpassed any expectations anybody could have had i saw it last year when you premiered it in bangalore and uh, i was absolutely blown away and uh, recently when i was in kabini i stayed at discovery and they were playing this movie again and that's when i thought i must invite you to the show and to talk about you know how you are a path breaker in this genre of natural history filmmakers in india and t- tell me how are you now encouraging more people to get into this so i think there are two things uh, we are doing with the film one is you know we have we kind of you know in india we we, we have a little bit of a uh, uh, inferiority complex about ourselves we think that we can't do a great job though we are very talented i think one thing is that now everyone knows that we can do this kind of quality work and that confidence is there in everyone and the second most important thing is the viewership this film has had which is about it ran 50 days in cinema across the country which is unheard of for any uh, in a my life film ever Uh, not just that, I, I also heard from our channel partner recently that it's clocked the most number of views uh, in 2020 for any wildlife film. So, which is I think to the you know 15 20 million views. So it just showed people that one, this is possible, and two, there's an audience for it, which were the two biggest questions, right? Like when usually you take it to a broadcaster or uh, to a cinema, they say, hey, you know, nobody's going to watch this. Now I think that has been debunked. And the second important thing is, of course, that we can do it. So those two things have been, uh, you know, kind of solved. Now it has opened up, I would say, a larger canvas for anybody who wants to do independent films, who wants to do collaborate with us, and and see this as a market, right? And also see this as a, an opportunity. So a uh, lot of people have started doing short film and also large format films. A lot of states are now supporting. Forest departments are supporting more filmmakers to come. So I think it's it's kind of changed uh, the trend. and started like a new wave of uh, possibilities uh, not just in terms of technology and i think just in terms of mindset of people right now people think it's it's possible now people think there are people who are ready to watch this so uh, just to let our audience know if they do want to watch it it's currently available on no it's on uh, discovery plus app it also plays on discovery uh, television uh, the teaser is of course on uh, youtube okay i also feel that somehow all these efforts that you're making are also going to have an impact in terms of conservation like you said you're opening mindsets with the work that you're doing you also make people more cognizant of what's happening to the environment around us and i'm keeping in mind you know this whole corona pandemic that started with just humans being completely disrespectful of our environment mm-hmm. what are your thoughts about it See, I think COVID has been like a great eye opener for all of us. Especially, you know, we we humans um, have exceedingly been kind of playing with the boundaries of nature, right? And when to think of it, so somebody did a small math. The if you put all the COVID uh, viruses that have infected humankind and measured the weight is less than a gram. and something less than a gram would bring the entire world to a standstill with all the technology we have technology now that is capable of living on mars but we still haven't been able to fight something which we can't even see so i think that humility about nature is something i think we've all learned uh, during the last year but having said that um right now more than ever it's important to protect our wildlife um, not just for their good but for our own good and what happened in wuhan is a classic example of what happens when uh, wildlife trade goes unchecked or wild meat uh, not trade goes unchecked i mean you think about india right india has a billion plus people and we still have tigers elephant and some of the largest uh, biodiversity hotspots but we still don't have pandemics coming from india which one of the big reasons for that is the forest departments enforcement of wildlife laws and also that humans are not in such close proximity uh, to wildlife and, and you know don't kind of interfere so much so i think we've done a great job in india so far and, and the proof of the pudding is the fact that we don't have pandemics originating uh, in india uh, we have a very very sporadic and not at this scale at all So I think now more than ever we need to take cognizance. Do we want to live in a world where every alternate year we are going to have a lockdown, or we are going to do something smart about it? All right. So you know this whole uh, journey that you carved for yourself in the last fifteen years. What is uh, your take away from it? How has it changed you as a human being, as a person? I think um, for me, going out into the wild or going into the nature is is a very humble experience. I mean. 
every time I go, I discover something about myself, the issues that I have, what I should do, brings more humility each time I go. It makes me feel, feel even more insignificant at the same time. But also what I've started slowly realizing over time, with a lot more, lot more, I would say, a uh, little more wisdom than I used to have is, is the fact that we are all so interconnected. And to be able to see that interconnectedness between all of us is, I think, what we've come a uh, very far distance from by putting so many barriers between ourselves and nature. And the simplest example is, like, you know, when, when the lockdowns are lifting, and I live right next to Lalba. The largest queue I saw was outside Lalba. If you ask somebody like two years ago, what's your dream? Oh, they would say, oh, give me like Netflix for three months. I don't want to get out of house. I want to watch TV and eat pizzas. But nobody wanted to do that after a short time. Everyone wanted to be outdoors. In fact, the bookings in some of the uh, jungle ecotourism uh, destinations are shorter because inherently we are, you know, to be uh, in nature. That's our genetic makeup. So we can't get very far away from it. So I think for me, I, I've realized that my best self is when I'm surrounded with trees. It doesn't even need to be wildlife. So I do my own little, I go to Lalbagh for a run and, you know, whatever little I can do, even if I'm stuck in city. So I think, yeah, I think it's, it's uh, you learn more about the interconnectedness about, of things. You know, I, what something that you said just now resonate with it completely. You said, you know, you feel so insignificant. What I have felt looking at the African safari or wherever, where I've seen the marvels of nature is all our human problems seem so trivial. And you just feel you're nothing but a speck of dust probably in the cosmos. It feels to us that our burdens are the biggest, but we are nothing. So our burdens are nothing. I think that's one of the reasons that you know, people should go and commune with nature because it puts things into perspective. No, no, absolutely. I, I mean, I was just last week, I was traveling somewhere and we went on a hike and we saw these huge, massive eucalyptus trees. And I said, wow, the cathedral of trees, right? And, and you know, you can feel the energy. It's, it's, it's not something that is just kind of like a metaphor. You can actually feel it. You feel recharged. You just feel like, I mean, it's, it, there is a reason why, you know, so many people hike to it. There's a reason why people are just craving to get out. And like you said, it, one makes us feel so insignificant, but also makes us feel that we need very little to live, you know, three meals a, in a day or two meals a day and, and a roof on our head. And that's pretty much what we need. And, and all of that we've built around it is just adding more layers and layers. It's, it's not like it's solving some esoteric kind of, you know, requirement we have. We don't. We don't. It's, it's simple. You walk, you eat, you know, you sleep. It's, it's really that simple. I don't know. I mean, I still, I still wonder why we've gone and complicated this so much. Absolutely. Now, I want to talk about some of the exciting moments that you would have had in the forest, you know, some near escapes or something really unexpected. But in the forest, the, the most irritating things are the kind of most... Um, the trouble you get is not from the big animals, it's from the small ones, the ticks and the leeches. Like I would, I would any day uh, walk in a forest with lots of snakes um, and leeches to actually getting bitten by ticks. So most people think it's it's the big big things, the small things. And, and mind you, the tick bites are really, really terrible. You, you have to scratch, scratch, scratch for three to six months. It's not a pretty sight. So <laughs> it's, 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 it's kind of disgusting at times, <laughs> like you're standing and scratching yourself in all wrong places, we think what's wrong with this fellow, <laughs> but actually I think by the you know, it's quite kind of nasty. But having said that, we've had some wonderful moments, I would say, very exciting moments where, which we've never thought we would ever see in the wild. I mean, if you've seen the movie, you would realize there is a, there's a scene where a whole bunch of otters, you know, chase a tiger away, which it has never been seen or never been documented before. And, um, you know, uh, a leopard chasing uh, a bunch of monkeys up the tree. These are things that, you know, one would never imagine would happen in the wild, but you keep your eyes and ears open and the forest will throw its own magic at you. Do subscribe to the Rain Tree Media channel on YouTube and share and comment on the video too. You can also listen to this interview as a podcast on Google and Spotify.